our research uh, was examining the storage duration of blood. Uh, it's been a point of anxiety for many. The idea that the longer you store blood, uh, the likelier it may be to introduce harm or simply not work as well as a fresh unit. There's been a lot of research funded uh, examining storage. Uh, fresh, typically defined as the first one to two weeks on the shelf, versus anything older than that, which tends to be the standard of care, often landing on mid-shelf life, let's say three weeks, or end of shelf life, which would be five to six weeks. And so we really wanted to uh, run a study examining the effect of storage, but not in a way where the doses of blood were small, or where the ages might be overlapping, uh, or where there might be a lot of other reasons for why the patients do the way they do. So we decided to ask this question in a context where storage blood research wasn't being funded. Um, half of the world uh, you know, lives in malaria endemic areas. Uh, there are many nations that aren't as developed as ours. Um, we are blessed with very rich inventory, but less developed countries aren't. Uh, and we know that the longer you can store blood for, the bigger your supply is. And anything that threatens to cut that storage limit shorter could limit the inventory available for less developed countries. What would be worse than having old blood on the shelf is possibly having nothing at all. Uh, and so the interest of our research was really to determine whether or not there is a defendable traditional storage time. What we wanted to do was see if the fourth to fifth week of storage was really as bad as many people were worried. Uh, and the real way to examine that would be to look at larger doses of transfusion that were actually needed. Uh, and to get a population where you have that base setting uh, would be to look at people starting off with profound anemia. Anemia that's so bad that they're exhibiting lactic acidosis. We know that when you don't have enough oxygen carrying capacity or red cell mass, um, your mitochondria aren't working anymore and lactic acid starts building up. So that's anaerobic glycolysis. And so the marker of not having enough oxygen delivery is high lactic acid levels in association with that low hemoglobin. So that's exactly the population that we decided to look at. And there, instead of looking at the harm of blood, we were actually looking at how well it performed, which is to say, does that buildup of lactate dissipate as quickly or as well when you use an old unit versus a fresh unit? And so we were essentially comparing the performance of the intended function of a blood transfusion, which is to bring more oxygen carrying capacity. Uh, and what we found was that the end of storage, the last 10 days of storage, day 25 to 35, was not inferior at all to fresh blood in the first 10 days of storage. This to us was extremely reassuring information. Um, and we're glad um, that this is the case. You know, no matter what the truth was, we really wanted to know it. If, if older blood it was not going to perform as well, of course, you don't want to promote that. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't have to cut your inventory short and make a shortage problem worse, you also don't want to do that. So there is a risk always that the precautionary principle can hijack, you know, the outcome. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that that precautionary worry uh, was founded or not. And so we believe that the study really helps gain more reassurance than what some other randomized control trials haven't offered yet.